This is the Rose Garden at Mesa Community College, the largest in the desert southwest. Take a stroll with us throughout the show. There's nearly 9,000 rose bushes in bloom. I'm your host, Kim Getz, and this is Maricopa Now. Coming up on this edition, two sisters, two graduates, and two success stories from Scottsdale Community College. Students turn everyday household items into a working radio at the Arizona SciTech Festival, and Native American culture comes to life at Mesa Community College. And there's so much more on this edition of Maricopa Now. Stay with us. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. Now she's holding on. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. The transition from college to the workforce can be a challenging journey. Two Scottsdale Community College graduates have taken a lead role in their chosen field. Lisa Aquafreda shares their success stories. Scottsdale Community College got the perfect set of students when the Hibbs sisters enrolled. Bella and Jordan Hibbs were so popular on campus, packing such star power, that the two were featured on numerous SEC publications. They were the ultimate go-getters. Jordan's the kind of student that you can count on when you, when you need a volunteer for something. She's always one of the first students that says, I can help. Bella found time to be involved in our student leadership forum and get involved in volunteer activities and her outgoing personality encouraged others. They are making a huge name for themselves in their different industries and all over the valley as two success stories. Let's take a look at Bella Hibbs. With the click of a button, Casting associate Bella Hibbs switches on the lights to start auditions at Good Faith Casting, an industry leader for casting projects like movies, print, and television shows across the Southwest. I think that casting is a really people person job, engaging with the customer, helping the customer, um, and I think because of that learning experience I got from SCC, I can really help the actors feel more comfortable, I can communicate better with my words and my actions to get them to give me their best performance. So is this one? Working alongside Bella is her foreign exchange student studying TV production at SCC. She's learning the ropes of the business from Bella. You just learn like the certain tips like how to speak to people to make them understand that you want them to act a certain way or maybe like stand a cert certain position. Here's Jay Jordan auditioning for a PetSmart commercial. Jay is a former Phoenix College student. Stand by and action. Hey Thor, come here buddy. Hi, you gonna be a good boy while I'm gone? Jay says he appreciates the honest feedback he gets from Bella. You can tell me what to do all day, but until I actually have the opportunity to put it on film and see myself, what I'm doing wrong, they can point out, see your facial expression there, see how your shoulders move there. It's so, I mean, it's just invaluable. Stephanie Sheeks is also auditioning. She's a graduate of Scottsdale Community College. Naturally, when we talk to people, we're just going to want to instead of you know, trying to keep it for the camera. Okay. They also say she goes the extra mile to give back and help others succeed. At SCC, I got involved with student life and leadership. I loved it. I learned not only just how to be a leader, how to work in a team, how to work with a lot of people, and I was able to take those skills and those values into my job. Bella says it's made her the excellent multitasker she is today, excelling at her job, excelling at planning charity events, excelling at bringing the film community together. And cut. From Maricopa Now, I'm Lisa Aquafreda. Bella Star Power is shared with her sister Jordan. Stay with us for her story later in the show. An empty water bottle, a safety pin, and some thumbtacks are all it takes to make a primitive radio. Garna Makia shows us how students are testing out technology that dates back to World War II. I build the radio. Bloom was one of the participants learning about the frequency of radio waves at this SciTech event. I made it with the wire, water bottle, two nails, a pencil and a paper clip. The Arizona SciTech Festival offers activities that engage, inspire, and spark the imagination. So our uh, contribution for this year and last year was um, 
building a, a foxhole radio. So it's kind of a neat uh, exercise. So it's a kind of a primitive unit radio that they used um, during wartime um, to try to still pick up the radio signals. I think I like the how the the pencil has to touch the little. Mark Haynes, a Marine veteran, taught about the importance and history of these radios during wartime. It gives um, a chance to explore a little bit of history, uh, radio history, and uh, a chance to throw a little bit of science into some of the science behind how radios work. Foxhole radios became very popular during World War II. They were named after the foxhole-like trenches where soldiers stayed. The Nazis wouldn't let them use radios in World War II. Prisoners of war ingeniously built them to get news and updates about the war. And so people would just take spare parts and they would just put stuff together and make a radio. By the end of the workshop, participants had fully functioning radios that they could take home. When it gets dark, I'm going to go out and I'm going to listen to it and see if I can hear something. But more importantly, they were excited about science. Things just, they get excited about science. And then that love of learning just carries on to all kinds of other things. I love doing experiments. We've got a whole new generation of youngsters that are gonna grow up and if we can get that generation enthused and excited about exploring things that still haven't been answered, then uh, that'll help that generation going forward. For Maricopa Now, I'm Garna Mejia. From technology of the past to how science affects our daily lives, the SciTech Festival is making it fun to learn. Cynthia Millard takes us to Paradise Valley Community College at Black Mountain for STEAMtastic. Like other SciTech events around the state, STEAMtastic celebrated science through fun, hands-on activities. The Black Mountain campus of Paradise Valley Community College hosted a full-day expo linking science and the arts to our everyday lives. So we have things like the pendulum painting um, to include some of the science of art and we added things like some of the culinary stuff like the molecular gastronomy stuff to add to the art part of science because there is a lot of science in art. Arizona SciTech volunteers helped get the event off to a successful start. We go out, we set things up and we just promote the events that all the organizations like Paradise Valley Community College have put together. Students also volunteered for the event. Dayton McCann led experiments and helped peers with their projects. Well, when I first walked into this event, I saw everyone working at desks, tables, and all the events set up for it, and it was pretty exciting to see like what you would be doing. Kids who attended this event at Paradise Valley Community College enjoyed a wide variety of activities, both inside and outdoors but there were fun events for the over 21 crowd as well. This room is the 21 and over room. This is the adult happy hour room. We have science of beer, we have infused liquor, things like that to, for science, but fun for the adults. Most of the event, however, was dedicated to young students who had fun making their own concoctions. You pretty much, instead of having someone teaching you what to do, you're doing it yourself, you have full range of what you want to do yourself instead of someone else teaching it to you. This was Dayton's first year at SciTech and he found the event to be pretty impressive. If you come here and not expecting you're going to have a fun time, you're totally wrong. You're going to have a great time doing your, all your experiments and it's just fun to be in the mix of things with high school and college students and pretty much adults too. Enthusiasm like this demonstrates how SciTech events inspire our scientists of the future. For Maricopa Now, this is Cynthia Millard. Coming up on Maricopa Now, take in the sights and sounds of Mesa Community College's Spring Pow Wow. Stay with us. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. 
I love to teach. I came to Scottsdale College because of the caliber and the quality of the education that was offered within this particular college and really felt that I had something I could offer to the students from my own professional life and especially within the theater program because I am a working professional and it's so wonderful to have that interaction with the students and there's such a rich diversity on the culture of the campus. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. One that teaches uh teaches a class in a practical way. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm paying for these classes, so I want to grasp and uh, obtain something that I can take further on in life. Here at the MCC Rose Garden, a special veterans rose garden honors our military members, while a new rose bed was recently dedicated to celebrate the college's 50th anniversary. Students elementary through college use this as a botanical laboratory. It is also open to the public for tours. Hello, I'm Rufus Glasper, Chancellor of the Maricopa Community College District. I'm personally very proud to say that all 10 of our community colleges have been designated as military friendly for 2015. We're proud to be among the thousands of VA approved teaching institutions. Our commitment to providing our veterans with the best possible opportunities for education and training is really a continuation of the efforts made with the Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944, better known as the GI Bill. For more than 70 years, the GI Bill has provided veterans with the resources needed to pursue their dreams through higher education. As a tribute to all of our veterans, Maricopa College's television honors those men and women who have enrolled in our community colleges in pursuit of their dreams. This video series is our way of expressing our profound gratitude for their service, sacrifice, and their desire to improve their lives through education. For U.S. Army veteran Ian Parkinson, putting on a uniform was one of the proudest moments. Many in his family have served in the military, and he knew he was going to continue the tradition. I was kind of that, that weird kid that would dress up in army fatigues, and so I think it was pretty clear what I was going to do. Parkinson says he wanted to train to be among the best soldiers. In Afghanistan, as part of the Army's 10th Mountain Division, he led a squad. While on patrol, he stepped on a mine. But in that moment, my, time had, my mind had a moment to race and just think, okay, is this it? What just happened? It was a blast. Did you... Did you just die? Is this it? What's going on? The explosion broke his pelvis in two places, his arm, and took both legs. At the brink of losing his life, Parkinson says his first reaction was the safety of his men that was on his mind. You're more concerned about those around you. So I wasn't I care about myself. I want to make sure my guys were okay. Parkinson believes that the challenges in life are what make it interesting. He says his rehab and learning to walk with prosthesis was a challenge he enjoyed. The recovery process was a lot of fun. <laughs> it really was. It, learning how to manipulate prosthetics and, and I was with my family. And Following months of rehabilitation and learning how to walk with prosthesis, Ian Parkinson is now focused on getting a computer science degree from Scottsdale Community College. He wants to inspire other veterans and help them make the transition to civilian life. And it's not like you just want, you know, you're a soldier one day and then the next you're not. You still carry with you an entirely different way of life. Parkinson now participates in C4 Vets. It's a nonprofit that helps reintegrate veterans into the civilian workforce and create a better awareness of their needs. I think it's important that organizations keep the public aware of what's going on and that we don't lose sight of our veterans just because it's not a trend or a fad. They still have served, they still have sacrificed. Parkinson is an Army veteran who's working hard to live life the best he can. The Army has taken wonderful care of me 
every step of the way has been smooth. I haven't had to fight it. So in just dealing with everything else, I mean, how can I complain? I've, I've lost friends they, who aren't here anymore. I can't, I can't be, feel sorry for myself. MCTV salutes veteran Ian Parkinson. For Pride in Service, this is Jesus Hernandez. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. This is Maricopa Newslaw. Chandler Gilbert Community College's Pecos campus used a powerful artifact to bring genocide awareness to students and the community. The 11-ton, 33-foot-long Holocaust-era rail car from Macedonia was the type used in Nazi Germany to transport Holocaust victims to labor and death camps during World War II. Recorded stories from survivors were also presented to provide first-hand experiences during this cruel time in history. The rail car now has a permanent home at a center that focuses on educating the public about the Holocaust and similar issues around the world. With a birthday comes a party, and Mesa Community College celebrated its 50th birthday in a very fun way. Please join me and say happy birthday to Mesa Community College! Inflatables, games, and demonstrations were a few of the activities at the celebration, ending with birthday cake for all attendees in the form of cupcakes. The highlight of the party was when everyone gathered and formed the number 50. A drone was flown to take a picture of the formation. From a campus that was first built in the middle of nowhere in 1963, MCC has come a long way. More than 40,000 students attend MCC. To view a timeline of MCC's history, visit mesacc.edu slash 50. Glendale Community College hosted its first Money Smart Fair with help from local businesses and community groups. Money Smart presentations cover budgeting, financial planning, responsible borrowing, and the importance of credit scores. I think this will really help our students um, be able to kind of really manage their money and as well be aware of you know, the different investment opportunities and uh, resources available to them so they can really make their money work for them. At this event, GCC students learned that no matter what career they decide to pursue, financial literacy is an important part of their education. And that's Maricopa News Log. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. That ember can ignite and destroy your home or community. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how you can help protect your community from wildfires. The cost of college tuition is a major concern for many college students. Reporter Nadia Petrick explains the ins and outs of getting financial assistance at the Maricopa Community Colleges. I didn't know how I was going to be able to afford college because I come from a low-income family and normally I'd be um, I'm trying to help and support my family. I'm the first one in my family to attend college. Uh, my mom, she didn't have a didn't earn enough to pay for my entire time to go to school, so it was basically me being able to do everything. What many students don't realize is that there are many opportunities for financial aid. Students at Gateway Community College can even take a special class where they learn how to manage their college finances. My first class that I had, it was called College for Success. That class was awesome. Uh, my teacher, she actually had financial aid come to the classroom and talk to us and they just gave us the whole rundown. How to apply for Pell Grants, how to apply for loans, which loan is good, which loan is bad. Financial aid specialists are always ready to recommend different solutions to help students cover their tuition. The first way that we usually recommend at the college is to complete the free application for federal student aid or called the FAFSA. It's available for free online. I feel that that's one of the best sources of financial aid that we can offer a student is the federal aid. 
The Pell Grant funds um, cap out at about $5,850 for one academic year, which is two semesters. So attending somewhere like a community college where it's $84 per credit hour, you know, you can easily cover most of your cost of attendance. Maricopa Community Colleges suggest to their students that there's four easy steps for success on how to start their college career. See an academic advisor, register for classes, pay for classes, and apply for scholarships. Maricopa County has a whole foundation. There's scholarships available there. There's a general application. So basically the student can fill out one set of information about themselves and use that to apply for different scholarships throughout Maricopa County. There's GPA scholarships out there. There are you know extracurricular activity scholarships, so maybe a sports scholarship. Those students who finish their first semester in college without academic issues can apply for a student success scholarship. After I was a student here for a whole full semester, the next semester I was able to apply for this scholarship called Student Success. Very competitive. I received that scholarship now for three semesters. The good news is you don't have to be straight A student to qualify for a scholarship. Last semester I did see one where do you like big hair and Diana Ross, this is the scholarship for you. Um, in my past as a financial aid administrator, I've seen scholarships for people that are left-handed, um, people with red hair. So there is a lot of interesting things out there. It doesn't have to be that you're the best student in the world. You might just have that little edge that <laughs> gets you into one of the more unusual scholarship opportunities. Being open to opportunities, communicating your needs, and asking for help is the best way to get it. The best thing to do is just ask, ask for help. There's help everywhere. If it wasn't for me coming in and just asking, like, what do I do, um, I probably wouldn't be here. My mom used to tell me, closed mouths don't get fed. So if you don't ask about them, you don't know about them. So don't be afraid. This is Nadia Patrick reporting for Maricopa Now. Native American tribes from Arizona and surrounding states gathered for the spring powwow right here at Mesa Community College. The event showcased a rich American heritage and an opportunity to support Native American college students. Deanne Kincaid has the story. Native Americans are dressed in full regalia for the Spring Powwow, hosted by Mesa Community College Intertribal Student Organization. The powwow serves to preserve the rich heritage of Native American culture. Tribes gather to renew old friendships, make new ones, and share a meal. The American Indian Institute fosters the cultural heritage of Native American students attending MCC. Not only do we provide um, academic services for them, we also provide um, cultural identity and uh, we empower them to become upstanding citizens within their own tribal nation. Visitors can stroll along the many vendor tents sampling Native American food while enjoying Native arts and crafts. Stevie Joey represents the Apache tribe from the San Carlos Reservation. He displays peridot gemstones, which he mines himself and polishes for jewelry making. This is my first time doing this at a powwow, so to the Native people, they, they love anything that Natives do, so, you know, it kind of enhances the, the, the tribe. Miss Native MCC is the liaison between students and the American Indian Institute. She has both Hopi and Navajo heritage and describes how she serves as a role model. I show respect to myself, my tribe, and my family. And I just go out and set a good example for everybody else. Alan hopes to break the negative stereotypes that surround American Indians and alcohol. There's a lot of people who say that Native Americans don't go anywhere and all they do is drink, but I want to help stop that stereotype by going out and getting my education and pursuing on with my career. While children play nearby, others put the finishing touches on regalia. These white rods in this ceremonial chest plate represent the bones of buffalo or deer. A headdress of eagle feathers and porcupine hair can cost several hundred dollars. The jingle cones on this skirt are made from tobacco lids. The rhythmic pounding of the drum circle represents the heartbeat of Mother Earth and sets the tempo for dancing. The lead woman dancer hails from the Navajo Nation. I learned to dance when I was uh, three years old, and I watched the older ladies dance, and I love the dance of the woman's jingle dress. 
As the sun sets, the evening festivities start with the gourd dance. Way back whenever the Indians were nomads, they would use these turtle shells to rattle. But now that everything's modern, we went to these salt shakers to represent that turtle. Proceeds from the powwow go to the Charleston Gray Scholarship, which benefits members of MCC's intertribal student organization. Funds are coming from are from our taco sales today, our food sales, also vendor fees, and also the drawings that were taking place tonight. The grand entry of tribal dancers is led by the color guard. The fry bread cooks are kept busy well into the night as the dancing continues under a full moon to complete the powwow. This powwow gives us all the opportunity to embrace and celebrate our rich American Indian culture through all the tribes. I'm Deanne Kincaid for Maricopa Now. Proceeds from the powwow go to the Charleston Gray Memorial Scholarship Fund, which helps MCC students from the Intertribal Student Organization. Earlier in the show, we introduced you to Bella Hibbs, and now we'd like you to meet her equally successful sister, Jordan. Here's Lisa Aquafreda with the second part to this Sister Act story. When it comes to social issues, this Scottsdale Community College graduate stays in the know. Hi, this is Jordan Hibbs with the Human Rights Campaign. How are you? Jordan says she Good. stands for equality. She's heavily involved with the Arizona Democratic Party. Yes. I volunteered on a lot of different political campaigns um, at the local and federal level. Um, and I've also been involved in educating citizens in Arizona about current legislation that affects them. How do you like it here at SCC? It's Often her involvement brings Jordan back to Scottsdale Community yeah, College. Hey everyone! How are you all doing? Good. Good. Do you all vote in Arizona? One of Jordan's goals is to inform students to make educated decisions about important topics. What we're doing right now is we're just asking that you reach out to your city council members uh, and talk to them about why you think that this isn't something that should be happening. At SCC, Jordan was the former vice president of student life and leadership, and that management role influenced her future. I think that if I didn't go to SCC, I would definitely be a different person. I learned a lot about leadership, and I've had a lot of great mentors through SCC that have actually um, gotten me to where I am today. Jordan believes students have the ability to impact change. There's so many students that are looking to get involved in something in the community, and I like to be there to tell them what they can do. <laughs> hey. Just by looking at the girls, you can see they look very different. Bella is redheaded while Jordan is blonde. And both of these girls may disagree sometimes on certain issues, but both stand for success. Yeah, it's a sisterly competition. However, what we see is that they're so supportive of each other, which is, it's really neat to watch that blossom. The girls are appreciative of their experiences from SEC. One of the big things that SEC taught me was that we're a part of something bigger than just me, you, this classroom, teachers. Um, it's about our community. Since I had so many supports as a student, I definitely see the need to give back to students now. And that's their ultimate goal. It's inspired me because having my peers be doing such amazing things out in the community just really shows me that, hey, I could do that and so could any of the, our other fellow graduates. And good luck with your studies. <laughs> Goes to show anything is possible when you put your mind to it. From Maricopa Now, I'm Lisa Aquafreda. And that's our show. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to stay tuned to MCTV for our great lineup of shows, including Inside Maricopa Sports and 180 View. Also, check out our website at maricopa.edu slash MCTV and click on DestTube. DestTube allows you to watch this show and all of our regularly produced programs anytime you wish. Until next time, take care. Don't touch that remote. MCTV has more great programming coming right up. Join MCTV every day for Inside Maricopa Sports in Foke and Tufaturo and our daily community calendar update in the district.